am an aggressive chess player and I think that everyone should be because playing chess is a lot more fun when you're constantly attacking. But most people do this in the wrong way. So today I'm going to tell you how to win by attacking in chess. Before we do that though, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video, Marvel Snap. Marvel Snap is a really fun card game that just fully released on Steam with widescreen support. If you haven't played it before, Marvel Snap won the Mobile Game of the Year at the Game Awards in December. It's a collectible card game that's known for fast games, deep strategy, deck building, and amazing art from beloved comic artists. In the game, you build your own deck and you try to come up with strategies on how to use your deck in the best way. For instance, a really cool card to build around is Sarah. She reduces the cost of all your cards at hand by one, so it's super fun to set your board up, play Sarah on turn five, and then slam the board with as many cards as you can for the win on turn six. But to keep things fresh, one new card is added to the game every week. So that your strategy is ever changing. There are now over 220 cards, and most cards come with unique abilities, 115 locations, and most locations have game altering effects, and 1,300 card art variants created by renowned comic artists. To celebrate the Steam launch, Marvel Snap has limited time login bonuses available, as well as Twitch drops that are live between August 22nd and August 29th. They're also giving out an exclusive Mech Devil Dinosaur variant for logging in through Steam. You Use my link in the description to download and play Marvel Snap on Steam and unlock the new Mac Devil Dinosaur variant. Thank you so much Marvel Snap once again for sponsoring the video and let's get back to playing some chess. All right, so before we get started, I want to tell you about the three principles that you need to think about throughout this whole game. First principle to remember if you're going to be an aggressive chess player is to not start attacking until you've developed your pieces. Getting your queen, bishop, and knight out and trying to go for a scholar's mate is not the way to attack. <laughs> Number two is to try to place your pieces on the most aggressive squares so that the pieces actually can cause damage. And I'll show you in the game what that means. And then the third one is to not sacrifice any piece until you see a forced win. A lot of people think that aggressive chess and attacking chess is just sacrificing all your pieces towards the opponent's king, sacrificing bishop, sacrificing a knight, but that's not what it is because you need your pieces to attack. So. I'm gonna play a 10 minute game against someone of my own level and this is gonna be very difficult, but we're gonna do our best here. So I know that this is very controversial, but I believe that 1d4 is a good way of <laughs> attack. And d4 is known to be a very boring opening, but I think that there's great ways of attacking by starting 1d4, um, specifically because it allows this open to be, this diagonal to be open for the bishop. So I'm going to go for the queen's gambit. This is the opening that I typically play, and this is one of my favorite openings. So knight over here, right? Now my opponent is going for the martial defense where they're actually saying, Anna, you can take this pawn. And you can go for this. And uh, actually, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I feel like that looks pretty active. So I'm going to take this pawn. And then after the knight captures back, I'm going to push e4, threatening this knight and taking the center. Now I'll just simply get my other pieces out. I could go knight over here, but I think I'm going to start by going knight f3. I'm going to start with this knight. And the reason for that is because I want to prevent e5. I want to prevent this pawn break in the center. So I'm just developing my pieces. But all, all of a sudden here, I already feel like I'm starting off to a pretty good opening in a pretty good position um because my pieces are very active so the bishop g4 there's a pin over here i kind of feel right now that i need to unpin myself um and i have a few different ways of doing this i could go bishop e2 but i actually kind of want to put my bishop here later on so i think i'm going to bring this bishop up to e3 and defend this pawn because i'm seeing that the threat of my opponent is to take and after i capture back with the queen which i want to to not get double pawns this pawn will be hanging so i'm moving here to defend the pawn at the same time as i'm developing so now i'm going to develop another piece that i haven't developed yet now i'm going to make sure that all my pieces are in the best square they could be before i start launching an attack and i will go here with the idea of later on pushing this pawn and looking towards h7. So now, I mean, it's almost like I want to launch my attack. I almost want to do it. I'm so close on wanting to do it. 
But I probably should castle first. Should probably castle first, just so that my opponent doesn't have any any things towards me. And now after I've castled, now I'm ready for the attack. Now I'm ready to go all in. And you see, I'm going, I'm gonna go for an attack this game without pushing my pawns like crazy over here, which you can do. I could have tried to go long castles and start pushing my pawns like crazy, but this position didn't call for that. So I didn't want to do it. Now though, now this is a position where all my pieces are developed. It's time now to find a way of attacking. So the first thing that comes to mind, um, now that I've covered the first two principles of developing and getting my pieces to, to aggressive squares, is that I need to open diagonals and open up the position. I mean, if the position is very closed, which means that pawns are blocking the pieces, it's going to be very difficult to actually have my pieces do things. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to start analyzing different ways of opening up the center to get my bishops involved because bishops are great attacking pieces. So maybe I'll push. This is the first idea that I'm thinking about. If I push, what happens then? Well, there's takes, takes. And the knight takes here. I'd be losing a, a pawn. But that'd be very dangerous because my queen and my bishop would be lining up towards the king. Can my opponent go there immediately? Not really, because then if this, I can take... And if takes, I can take back the pawn. And if queen takes, I actually have a discovered check winning the queen. These are a little bit of some difficult concepts, but these are the things that I'm thinking about right now. How do I defend this pawn in an active way? Because a very passive way of defending this pawn would be to simply go knight e2. This would be very passive, very passive, or even moving my bishop one square back. This would be very passive. There's nothing wrong with being passive, but I like being aggressive and I like attacking and these are not attacking moves so if you're like me these are not the moves you should go for so I think this move is good and also I really like that this is one opening up for my bishop but two is also opening up for some more squares for my pieces so now knight over here my bishop is under attack but the reason my, my opponent wants to do this is because they want to get this knight up over here but I know that I don't want to trade bishops because if I trade bishops then my opponent will get some great light squares. Uh, because of my both pawns are in dark squares, my best bishop here is this one, is my bishop is, is the piece that's actually like uh, being able to roam around. This bishop is kind of stuck, so I need to keep this bishop. I need to not exchange it. And this is also very important, knowing what pieces to exchange or not. So I'm looking at three different moves. The first one is going bishop e4, threatening the pawn on b7. The second one is to go bishop b1, with the idea of lining up my queen and creating a battery towards the king. And the third one that I'm going to analyze very briefly is bishop takes h7, because as an attacking player, and honestly, as any chess player at all, you should always be analyzing checks, captures, and attacks in a position. So bishop takes h7. Why am I analyzing this? Because after king takes, I have this knight check. And if the king moves, I can take this. Now, if after takes, takes, and check, the bishop would take, I'd take this bishop, but I'd end up being a piece down. Although, this king would be very weak. But this is one of those moments where this move kind of, you know, I'm kind of getting like a feeling that I kind of want to do it. But it's a very risky move to do because I don't see the immediate win. And I shouldn't not follow my principle. <laughs> I need to follow my principles, so I shouldn't take this pawn. I really shouldn't do it. Takes. Just gonna analyze it one more time. Takes, takes. And if bishop takes in this, actually my rook is coming in with force. A lot of force. Mm. Okay, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go bishop b1 instead. And I'm going to place my bishop right over here, which looks a little bit strange. That's, I'm right now blocking my rook, but the idea is going to be to go for this battery. 
So what's going to be really important now is that after this knight moves here, I do want to start getting my queen into the game, but if I would get my queen somewhere here, this bishop would be able to come in. So I need to make sure that I don't allow anything like that. I've spent quite a lot of time, just like my mom always says, my mom always says that my biggest problem in chess is that I spend too much time thinking as I'm always trying to find the most beautiful moves. And that is true. That is one of my biggest weaknesses, but it also leads to me having more fun playing chess and also to sometimes playing really beautiful games. I once won uh, a brilliancy prize in a tournament for playing the most beautiful game in the tournament. So when the tactics work out, it's great. It's a great feeling. You feel dopamine all over your body. You feel absolutely amazing. And then when it doesn't work out, you feel kind of stupid, but <laughs> you just gotta think whilst you're playing that you're a genius and that your moves work. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a different style of playing chess, but I love it. All right, so knight over here. So now the first thing that comes to mind is going a3. I want to eliminate this knight so that I can get my queen around. The next thing that comes to mind is kicking away this bishop. The third thing that comes to mind is, once again, going for this sacrifice. But I'm going to start by going h3. Because if there would be a trade here, I would be very happy as the light squares would be mine forever. So my opponent goes here instead. And now, once again, I'm going to calculate this. Because takes, takes, knight... Check, bishop takes, queen check, bishop retreats. The knight goes up. And this is a different story. I'm constantly looking at this now that all my pieces are lined up in such a good way. I'm looking at this move because I see that this bishop is undefended and I see that there's some discovery checks. So bishop takes pawn here. This is very, very, very spicy. King takes, and this is the moment you need to analyze this very carefully. Bishop takes pawn, king takes bishop, knight check. If king g6 defending the bishop, I have queen b1. If f5, knight takes, it's a fork, it should be good. Okay, so I actually think that I'm seeing some forced things. Takes, takes, knight check, bishop takes, queen check, bishop here. And I believe that knight here is a good move. No, I believe that taking, taking... Do I believe or not, though? Do I believe or not? Because I could also just keep this going. I could just go knight over here and just slowly but surely create an attack, but... Okay, I'm doing it. I am doing it. Because I do truly believe in this move right now. Just because of the fact that I'm seeing how, how immediately weak this king is going to get and how many pieces I'll be able to get in immediately. Knight check. This move doesn't work. I have to take. I go here and now the only move is to go bishop h6. And now, I do need to keep my attack going, for sure. The question is, do I go here? I think I do. I think I go here now. I'm threatening, I'm threatening some checks. So takes and takes in this move. So 
So I think before I do anything crazy, I am looking at. Okay. I'm gonna oh okay, okay, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, it's fine. Alright, you know what? I'm I'm actually just gonna go for this. I'm getting I'm getting a free queen now. In fact, I'm not just getting a free queen, I'm getting a checkmate. I am getting a checkmate. Knight fork. Yeah, this is a mistake. I blunder the rook. But knight fork, king here, takes, takes, and it's a checkmate. And this is literally all coming from the fact that <laughs> my pieces were so good lined up there. But I was also a little bit lucky here. Um, but th this is a crazy checkmate, actually. This is going to be a really crazy checkmate. Queen takes bishop and rook h7 check made its force. There's nothing my opponent can do. There's takes. And after this, rook h7 check mate. And we're going to beat a 2300 like this. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. That is crazy. Yeah, there's there's not there's only one legal move right now, so I'm not sure if they're gonna be waiting it out or what's happening. But this is this is just force. But I was pretty lucky here. Um, I think I should maybe have taken the pawn immediately and sacrificed the rook on a one, or just gone rook d one instead. But I wasn't so happy about losing this pawn, so I'll have to check what the best way of continuing that was. But the point is that. By being able to get my pieces in such good squares and starting this attack, which I believed in, by sacrificing my bishop at that point and getting all my pieces up, the moment that I thought that there truly was something, um, I was able to just get a really, really, really attacking game. I think that my opponent might wait this out for a little bit. Okay, I've been sitting here now for five minutes. <laughs> my opponent hasn't made a move. Don't do this, okay? Don't do this. If you're losing a game, just just either resign or quit the game or whatever. But now I'm just sitting here drinking some water. My opponent thought that I was going to be gone by this point. But no, 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 we were sitting here waiting and we did the checkmate. And here, I guess I did go against one of my principles. I, I did, I, I sacrificed my bishop way too early, but my heart just really wanted to do it. Um, but yeah, I kind of went against one of my principles, I suppose. So you should be more sure about it before you do it. But I think that attacking chess is super fun and this is my favorite way of playing chess. I hope that you at least learned something in this video and, you know, at least maybe you got some cool tricks that you might be able to use in your own games. Thank you so much for watching this video and thank you so much Marvel Snap for sponsoring once again. I'll see you all in, I'll see you all in my next video.